We're down on the farm with Windsor, Carrie and Crow. Mark is keen to express his fondness of Andy, especially as Andy will hopefully be delivering some good shooting today. It's showing promise. The Cowman, another superhero Marvel failed to develop, is keen for Crowman to move the crows and jackdaws on a bit as they're making a nuisance of themselves around his yard. Mark, not wanting to feel left out, needs to find something a bit more original. Do you think I look like Batman? Anyway, whatever superpowers we have on tap today, Crow has to be careful not to disturb the cattle, and all shots need to be directed across the field in front. They're feeding on all the concentrates that are in the, in the barns, plus they've been on the top of the lagoon. Just any feed that is here for the cows, really. They've been on the silage clamps, they're picking holes in all the plastic sheets on the silage clamps, on the round bales. They're just a pain in the neck, they really are. And uh, it's just nice that Mark wants to come down and shoot some, and I'm going to give it a go as well. We usually, we have been shooting quite a lot, but we've been shooting out on the fields because they've been out there, but now they've cleared most of the feed up that's on the maize stubbles. They're really concentrating on the barn here. So. Andy sets out a pattern but suggests too much movement can be a bad thing. Good job he has it all under remote control. When crows are feeding, they usually feed quite close together, so just put a load out. I've got, um, I've got a flapper from uh, UK Shoot Warehouse, that's going to be on a speed controller, so it just slaps really slow, because if you haven't flapping fast, they don't like that. If it goes full, full pet like that, they don't like that, it's, it's going too fast. So. Let's get it down to about there somewhere. Just so that the wings are moving, just so it's a bit of movement, that's all you need. And that's going to be on a remote control back to the hive. The corvids are incredibly wary and we are going to have to be stealthy to catch them out. Crow heads off with Rachel to have a go at some pigeons further down the valley, leaving Mark next to the dairy. Mark is making contact with the birds, but they're not dying as well as he'd hope. Yeah, I've changed the shells with a lot of these crows um, and the jackdaws, really. There's a couple coming now. They're, um, they're coming in quite close up the valley because the, the, the hill slopes down quite steeply there. Um, it's hard to get the depth of a uh, field. And by the time they're on top of you, they're actually a lot closer than you think. Um, so I've actually opened up to, uh, to fives. Um, I had some fours in there, but... It's just too heavy for them. Um, we're getting like clumps of feathers coming out where the shot's so tight, so I'm gonna open the pattern up. Obviously this gun's choked three quarter and full, you see, so we've got quite a tight pattern thrown. So hopefully with a few more pellets spread a little, we should get some better kills, really. He changes shells. Then he pulls this out of the locker. Oh, yes! <laughs> Whoa, look at that. Sorry about the uh, the screaming. Shot of a lifetime, literally. What do you reckon the yardage of that? Go on, David. 40. You bugger. God, talk about take the wind out of somebody's <laughs> sails. Yes. Look at that, look. You beauty. What do I reckon it was? Well, that was a jackdaw. Now, they do appear to be further away than crow than they look, but that was definitely up there. Did you hear me say, I oh, will have a go anyway? I reckon it's got to be 70, 65. Very, very pleased with that. That was, that was awesome. So Mark can't blame shells for any misses, but what about classic excuses he has heard and uses in the field and the clay ground? The main excuses are sort of, you know, I've got wind, my belly hurts. I mean, that's, that's my excuse a lot of the time anyway. Yeah, you because know, you can't move with your core, you know. So if Mark is posting a low score on the clay circuit, best it's give him a wide berth. Oh, there we go. You can always tell as well, when you hit the crow, the beak will open wide. There's a shock where the shot has obviously hit it. Now that was hit twice, full pattern. You saw that, David. He's gone, what, 150, 200 yards and then fell dead, so... Pigeon. So yeah, it's, you know, it's very, very tricky on a day like this, especially when you're looking through the net trying to see the bird coming into you. It's very hard to just sort of get the description of whether it is a, a crow or a jackdaw, you know, so... All adds to the fun. 
the birds are finding the pattern but hanging off and every bird is deserved. Another tricky element of shooting here is the angle. If the birds come in low, Mark has to change his position. Now what usually happens when you miss a lot of birds below your feet is as you bring the gun into your shoulder, you can't effectively see the bird because it's a lot lower than the gun. So what your instincts will tell you is to lift your head to look at the bird. A lot of the time the gun will just come away from your face and you'll either shoot low, high or offline, you see. So obviously when you're ever, whenever you're shooting lower into the ground with lower, lower decoys, you've always got to be careful that the gun doesn't come away from your head. You've got to keep your head down onto the stock and also that the height doesn't get in your way because that will also make you lift or push your hand high, you see. So there's a lot of things to take into consideration when you're shooting on, uh, on undulating ground. Um, unfortunately today we're on quite a steep bank so it's quite tricky for us to shoot, but we're doing all right. We've got 15 or 20 so far, so they will keep going. One of the birds approaching, Mark swears, has something in its feet. Like a vole or a gerbil or something. <laughs> I don't know if I've... Uh, gerbil. Did I say gerbil? <laughs> Crikey. Rat, mouse, gerbil. Oh, that one there? Yeah, yeah, we'll go and see him in a minute. There he is. What do you reckon it is? Gerbil? Oh, mud. Mud. Looked like he was carrying something. That's how we want him, look. Right up in the front end. I know we're shooting obviously vermin, um, obviously all demands respect and it's all on, uh, it's all on right, it's a living thing so you obviously want to go for the best shots possible really. Now you can see that is, you can get that more, uh, more spot on really. It's better to see them drop straight down knowing you've killed them outright rather than see them with a wing up trying to run down the field. Um, the old beak on him, that. that. Obviously, see why you don't want to bring a dog on a day like this because I mean that beak near the length of my finger. I know that. Weighing down. I generally thought he had like a rat in his uh, in his feet or a gerbil. It's not quite the day Crow had hoped for, but the farm has done some spreading and that has spread the birds too. Still, it's been a fun day with some shots any superhero would be proud of.